Hey guys, don't you hate it when you do this really great video and it's like your heart is just poured all over it and then the video corrupts and you have to start over. Yeah, that just happened. So that just happened. Yeah. We're finishing up chapter four of John. And so here we go. After the two days he left to Galilee. So let's start with ESV version of some notes. Yeshua's ministry in Galilee. Let's speak about that. Yeshua spent most of his life and ministry in the region of Galilee, a mo mountainous mountain, no, mountain, lots of mountains, area in northern Palestine. Yeshua grew up in the hill town of Nazareth, about 3.5 miles south of the Gentile administrative center of Sephoris, S-E-P-P-H-O-R-I-S, -S, Sephoris. Interesting. Soon after he began his public ministry, Yeshua relocated to Capernaum. Where was Capernaum next to that? Capernaum is about, mm, I'm going to say, probably two or three days. Maybe. Somebody correct me if that's incorrect. <laughs> Thank you. Two or three day walk from there, I'm guessing. Ye uh, Yeshua relocated to Capernaum in the Sea of Galilee. By Yeshua's time, a thriving fishing industry had developed around the sea, and several Yeshua's disciples were fishermen loud, thundering, cursing fishermen. Those crazy men. They probably drank too much. Yep, the father does gather the foolish to astound the prideful, doesn't he? Oh, yes, he does. But the other reason I wanted to mention that is because remember that Yeshua grew up in Palestine, for crying out loud. Pretty much. So next time you are watching the news and you hear words like, oh, I don't know, Pakistan, Palestine, Iraq, Afghanistan, <laughs> those triggering words that have been made to scare you and made you go, oh, terrorists. Palestine. Yeshua walked in Palestine. After the two days he left Galilee, Yeshua knew well from the experience that a prophet is not respected in the place where he grew up. So, he's going back there. Why is he going back there? Well, let's see. He's becoming quite popular these days. Um, so, where his home before, where he wasn't honored before, now he might be honored. What could he do with that? fake honoring because really if if you're going back home and all of a sudden everybody was shooing you away and saying you're crazy is now like oh yeah dude I'm I was I'm, I'm his neighbor like we're this tight like oh yeah we went to school together oh are you kidding we apprenticed together in that carpenter shop whatever it is where before nobody paid heed to him now they're going to pay heed to him because he's popular so what's he going to do with that probably use it for good instead of getting better about it right so he's going back now, this is a small section that speaks about him taking care of uh, a, per, a son, a son of, a, of a man who, knowing that he was coming back, was like, oh, come help my son. The reason I wanted to bring this up is because it's reminiscent of two other stories. Um, the healing of the official son resembles that of the Gentile's centurion servant in Matthew 8, 5, 13. The Gentile's centurion servant? What's one is that? It resembles that of a man that had an unclean spirit that used to run around in uh, the tombs. And no matter what you did, you could chain him all up. He'd be running around naked, scaring the crap out of everybody. And no chains could hold him down. That's how many demons he had in him. So many unclean spirits. He was just crazy, scaring freaking people out. Well, Yeshua went and healed him. And he was tame as a puppy after that. Uh, a lot of belief, a lot of people came to faith because of that miracle but that's not the miracle we're talking about here although it is reminiscent the other place where it's reminiscent of is Luke 7 chapter 2 through 10 in that incident it was like say the word and the servant my servant will be healed it was a man that uh, knew the chain of command and had great faith and Yeshua commended him for being well wow, here's this one man that in just that one instance of like, oh, I don't want to bother you. I, I, I know how this works. I know your great power. I have faith in you. So I know you don't have to stop what you're doing, come all the way to my house and, and, and check on my servant. 
My servant is an incredible human being. I know that obviously he's come all this way to say, hey, can you help my servant? He's, he built the synagogues. He's very loved, he's very ill. And I know that all you have to say is but the word. He is healed and I know he'll be healed. Yeshua was very taken aback by his immense amount of faith. It was like, yeah, buddy, where can I get more of you? And yes, your servant's healed and so he was. But that's not the story we're dealing with here. Reminiscent of it, but not. So don't get confused. Okay, so now Yeshua knew well from experience that a prophet is not re respected in the place where he grew up. So when he arrived in Galilee, the Galileans welcomed him, but not only because they were impressed, but only because, yes, but only because they were supposedly impressed with what he had done in Jerusalem during the Passover feast. Not that they really had a clue about who, who he was or what he was up to. Yeah, they may have known who he was as, you know, Joseph and Mary's son, but they didn't know really who he was. They just knew he was back and popular, and so they were going to rub elbows with him now. Now he was back in Cana of Galilee, the place where he made the water into wine. So people undoubtedly were, some especially the servants were undoubtedly still talking about that. Meanwhile in Capernaum there was a certain official from the king's court whose son was sick. When he heard that Yeshua had come from Judea to Galilee, he went and asked that he come down and heal his son. He was on the brink of death. So he came running to Mr. Official, like, I work for the king. You've got to come and fix my son because he's dying. Yeshua put him off, probably remembering the other gentleman that had come up to him in Luke and said, hey, no, all you have to say is the word. Thank you so much for your time. Love you. See you. Thank you very much. Unless you people are dazzled by a miracle, you refuse to believe. So he and probably this king's servant, I mean, king's, professional dude came and, and demanded he probably was demanding of Yeshua and for Yeshua to be kind of snippy I'm, I'm guessing he wasn't having a really good time back at home but why was he at home probably to save this person I'll, and I'll show you why this one son because they say that a prophet is never honored at home go back to your hometown for Christmas or Thanksgiving with a family you don't get along with that calls you crazy and shoes you off and then ignores you. So think of it, think of it like that. <laughs> yeah, now we're back. But why is he back? So my heart tells me it's for this one man, son. Joshua put him off. Unless you people are dazzled by a miracle, you refuse to believe. But the court official wouldn't be put off. Come down. It's life or death for my son. It's not very nice. Demanding. Pleading. Where's your faith? Jesus simply replied, go home. Your son lives. Just go home. Your son lives. So after that much passion and aggression, trying to get him to do what he wanted to do, he got the words that he wanted. So he started walking back home. It was a two day walk or so to get back home. So what was he like for those two days, this father? This king's professional dude that was demanding of Yeshua to come. And Yeshua was like, he's healed, go home. Okay. Okay. So he went home and for a day he must have been really a testament to his faith, huh? Yeshua came back to Galilee to save this whole family, starting with the son, starting with showing the father if this is how much faith you have in me but yet you demand such control what are you showing your are you going to be dependent on a man showing up or are you going to be dependent on your faith and knowing that if so and so is a person of faith and you see that light in them that you're just going to believe in them and go home in that peace or are you going to need to control them demand things from them so he had a day to walk and think about that as his son lay on his heart. He said he would be healed. He said to go home. He said he would be healed. He said to go home. He said he would be healed. He said to go home. And after 24 hours of that, the men believed the bare word Yeshua spoke and headed home. Because he believed it. He calmed down. And on his way back, his servants intercepted him and announced, your son lives. 
Ah, he must have been skipping home after that. Oh, yes. My son lives. Furthermore, he asked them what time he began to get better. They said the fever broke yesterday afternoon at one o'clock. Well, that's the time he had spoken to Yeshua. So the father knew that and was the very moment Yeshua had said, your son lives. Well, that clinched it. Not only he, but his entire household believed. This is how the second sign Yeshua gave after having come from Judea and Kit to Galilee. This was now the second sign Yeshua gave after having come from Judea into Galilee. And so that father came home joyful, full of energy. And I bet after that, his entire family, servants included, and neighbors after that, and whoever else that person affected positively, undoubtedly had a much more joyful faith. Not that desperate kind of, I need you to come to my house. Why the signs and wonders? Have a gentle faith. Believe that you are loved and believe that your son is healed, that your heart is healed, that your past is healed, that your future is bright, and that it's simply because you are loved and you have accepted that. I love you guys. We'll see you tomorrow. Tomorrow we start on chapter five of John. Love you.